ان الحمد لله نحمده ونشكر ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors and his bounties and one day inshallah we will all see the great reward that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us just for praising and glorifying him we seek allah's protection for we desperately need allah's protection and we seek his guidance my dear brothers and sisters we cannot guide the ones we love guidance is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we would like to see our relations and our close friends on the straight path and we should continue to make effort and try our best to encourage each other but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whom he will we beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are sick to grant them shifa and those who are in difficulties to grant them ease and those who have returned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this ummah we beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon them to forgive them and to grant them jannatul firdaus ameen my dear gathering throughout al quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep reminding us about his bounties and he keeps telling us to reflect on these favors and these bounties For example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in many places ya ayyuhal ladina amanu dhkurullah ya ayyuhal ladina amanu dhkuru ni'mata Allah alaykum remember and reflect of Allah's bounty upon you even if you are in difficulties even if you are just diagnosed with a worse sickness wazkuru ni'mata Allah alaykum remember and think and reflect on Allah's bounties and in some verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us alam tara alam tara don't you see don't you reflect alam tara anna allah sakhkhara lakum ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa asbagha alaykum ni'mahu dhahiratan wa batina don't you see how much allah has done for you that he has made everything in the heaven and the earth serviceable to you and he has showered you with his blessings with his bounties those that you can recognize and those that you can't even recognize so even if you have just lost the closest person to you wazkuru ni'matallahi alaykum remember reflect on allah's bounties and favors because the little difficulties that we are going through even if we just lost our job or we are sick the little difficulties we are facing is insignificant
compare to Allah's bounties upon us. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Al-Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعِمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ If you try to count Allah's bounties and favors, you will never be able to. Because some of these bounties you can't even recognize. His bounties is too much, is too magnificent. And as human beings, we take these bounties for granted. We take Allah's favors and bounties for granted. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep reminding us, reflect on my favors and bounties upon you. For example, look at our body. Look at the sight that we have. We take it for granted. But imagine you cannot see. How much will you pay to get your sight back? Imagine you're sitting in this masjid and you cannot hear me. How miserable your life will be. Or you lose your memory and can't remember things. But we take these things for granted. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep telling us, reflect on my favors and my bounties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all these favors and bounties. And he keep reminding us, make use of it. You have the opportunity, you have sight, you have health, you have life. Make use of the opportunity. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, make use of Allah's bounties before you lose them. Ikhtanim khams and qabla khams. He says, make use of five of Allah's great bounties because you will lose them. Without any doubt, you will lose it. So make use of it before that time comes when you won't have it anymore. And he says, Sihata qabla saqamik. Make use of your health. Don't take it for granted. Don't abuse your health. We are human beings. And one of the things we are subject to is sickness, every one of us. Some more severe than some. So while you have good health, cherish it and make use of it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do things that are beneficial for yourself and your community because as human beings one of the things we are subject to as well is accident we may think we are healthy and we have time and we are strong but think about a year ago where did COVID-19 came from and suddenly all of those who are healthy become scared. Think about how many people die on road accident or stray bullet. How many people become crippled in the winter. How many people just having their dinner and have an accident even eating their dinner. So my brothers and sisters, make use of the hell that Allah has blessed you with. Because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that most people, most people abuse their health. Ni'matani maghboonun fihi ma kathiru min nas Many people, they abuse two of Allah's favor. as They abuse their health. They don't make use of it. My brothers and sisters, many of our brothers and sisters, they are in a chair. And one day, we may be there. And may Allah bless all those brothers and sisters who are sitting on a chair. And may Allah grant them shifa. But think about one day when you cannot make sajda. And you cannot make ruku like you will want that you can today. And you cannot do the things or you cannot remember. You cannot memorize Quran anymore. You cannot, you are slow. So while you have good health, make use of it so when you become sick, and may Allah protect us all, then you will get the reward as if you are healthy. But make that effort to utilize your health now, to benefit from it, to make sijda now. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Faragak qabla shughulik. 
make use of your spare time. And this is one of the ni'mah that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that people abuse. And many of us may think and feel we don't have spare time because everyone is busy. If you ask any brother or sister, what are you doing? I'm busy. Everyone is busy. We think we are busy. We think we are busy. But that leisure time we have that we abuse, a time will come that we did not fill that space of time with good deeds. One of the greatest danger of our age is the screen. Whether it's a television, a computer, a phone, it's a great danger. The average person spends about six hours a day on a screen. Alhamdulillah, there are many who spend their time on the screen to make a living. MashaAllah, may Allah bless them. They are those who spend their time on the screen to do good work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. They do not count in that six hours a day of people who spend time on the screen doing what? And if we say half of that time we spend on things that are beneficial and useful, then alhamdulillah. But if we are spending our time on things that are useless, finding out who got divorced, or who wear what, or who attend a funeral, or who attend this use, useless information that is there to distract us. If we become distracted with that, that is how we will kill our time. And my brothers and sisters, look at your own schedule. I don't know your schedule, but look at your schedule and you will find that if you make your schedule properly, you will have so much time to do things that you think you are too busy to do. Because if you don't have a schedule, and as Muslims we must have a schedule, because our daily adab, our daily ibadah taught us to have a schedule, on our prayer time for example, and if you don't have a schedule, then you will be on somebody else's schedule. And that is where you will kill your time and you will abuse this ni'mah. And on the day of judgment, the wrongdoers, they will plead, Rabbi rji'oon, la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarakto. The wrongdoers will say, Oh Allah, send me back. Give me some time back. Kalla innahu, innaha qa'ibah, innahu qa'iluha. It will not happen. So while we have the time now, if you are out of a job, don't spend it in bed. If you are sleeping too much, get out of bed and do something useful. If you are spending it with company or talking to people at things that are useful, then fix your schedule and make sure that whatever you're doing in life with that time that Allah has blessed you with, allocated to you, that is useful because it can be taken from you at any time. It can be taken away from you at any time. So make use of your spare time, my brothers and sisters. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue, Shababak qabla haramik. And may Allah protect us all for, from haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-haram. What is that? Old age. Make use of your youth before you become old. Your youth when you have the energy and the zeal. That time of your life where you should be preparing and laying the foundation for your future. Where you should be serving yourself and your family and your community where you are more, most useful, make use of it before a time come. When old age, when you will slow down, when some will lose their memory, when you will not be able to make sijda properly, when you will not be able to go to hajj, when some people will lose their teeth and you will become wrinkled. 
when some people will even wear diaper in their old age. So don't wait for that time. While you have that energy and that strength in you, make use of it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fulfill your, fulfill your oblig obligations to yourself and your family and your community. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue, ghina'ak qabla faqrik. Make use of the wealth that Allah has blessed you with before it's taken away from you. Before it's taken away from you, if Allah has blessed you with wealth, make use of it by spending in his path. Don't be like Qur'un that Allah, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about him in Al-Quran. When Allah blessed him with wealth, and he think I will have this forever. In the Qur'un kana min kawmi Musa, فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ وَاتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُسْمَةِ أُولُ الْكُوَةِ A group of strong men cannot even carry the keys to his wealth. So much Allah has blessed him with. And he became arrogant and boastful and think that this is what all his effort فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضِ Allah cause the earth to split and Karun and his wealth disappear as they never exist. So whatever we have and I'm sure you have known many people who are walking the street today who were once upon a time wealthy in terms of money and wealth. It can be taken from you. COVID has taught us that you can lose your job at any time. And the average American is two paychecks away from poverty. You can lose your business. So if Allah has entrusted us with wealth, spend it in the right path. There are many who are hungry today. There are many who are without shelter. Spend it in the way that will give you the most benefit and reward. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hayatak qabla mawtik. Make use of your life. This time that Allah has allocated and given you in this dunya. And in the past year, so many examples we have seen where our life can be taken away from us at any time. So don't think that I will die when I'm in my 80s and 90s. Yesterday there was a Janaza, 38 years. Don't think you have time because there are many who are planning. When I become old, that's when I will worship Allah. When I become old, that's when I will take care of my, my parents. When I have enough money, this is when I will do that and do that. While we have the life and opportunity today, do it today. Because in the past year, more than 3 million have died. And I'm sure everyone had planned. We will do this tomorrow. We will do this next week. And that is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَوْذِرَ الصُّبْحَ If the evening arrives, don't wait until morning. If you have good things, good deeds to do, things to do, do it right now. And in the morning, don't wait until the evening. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. And He has continued to give us opportunity. Opportunity to get close to Him with our wealth, with our health, with our time, with His life. Let us make sure we seize the opportunity and don't waste these favors and bounties that Allah has blessed us with. Don't take these favors for granted, my brothers and sisters, because without any doubt, they will disappear one day. Akulu Kauli has a.
Alhamdulillah wahda wassalatu wassalamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd My dear gathering one of Allah's precious ni'am gift and blessing upon us is that he has blessed us with Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us so much that every year he blesses us with Ramadan so that we can reconnect to his book Al-Quran we can reintroduce ourselves to the Quran we can recharge we can strengthen ourselves against the temptations of shaitan we can refine our character we can get rid of our bad habits and we can strengthen our good habits one month of vigorous training to prepare us for the rest of the year and one of the blessings of this beautiful month is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises al maghfirah he promises forgiveness man qama ramadan iman and wahti saban ghufiyala huma taqaddama min dhambi those who observe ramadan not only fasting not only suhoor and iftar and taraweeh but those who observe ramadan in the right way and observe all the boundaries and the rules of ramadan and go through that training, proper training of Ramadan, then their sins will be forgiven. All their sins will be forgiven. This is an opportunity we have, my brothers and sisters, to get our slate clean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Hasten to it. Don't delay. Seek Allah's forgiveness urgently before it's too late. And why we need to do that? Because every single one of us is a sinner. No exception. Adam Every child of Adam is a sinner. We all make mistakes, every one of us, no exception, because we are not angels, we are human beings. What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, the best of sinners are who? Those who repent. Meaning the best of human beings are those who repent, because every human being is a sinner. We all make mistakes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahin. Allah loves those who turn to Him and ask for forgiveness. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. Tubu ila Allah jami'an ayuhal mu'minun al-allakum tuflihun. Make repentance, turn to Allah so that you can be successful. Your silisama alaykum idrara when you seek forgiveness. Who would say to his people, Istaghfiru Rabbakum? Your silisama alaykum idrara wa yazidkum kuwatan ila kuwatikum. Allah will increase your sustenance, increase your strength and your dignity. Just by turning to Him, because Allah loves when we turn to Him in, forgive, in repentance. My dear gathering, the door for repentance is open. Now is the time to come with a clean slate. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow will be, may be too late. Allah has blessed us with Ramadan, there are many of our brothers and sisters and our relatives who were with him, who were with us last Ramadan. They don't have the opportunity. We have the opportunity now. Don't take it for granted. Don't abuse this opportunity. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to stretch out his hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to stretch out his hands to forgive. He stretched out his hands in the night to forgive those who commit sin in the day. And stretched out his hands in the day to commit those who commit sin in the night. Until the sun rises from the west. So while we have the opportunity now, make use of it. And how do we do that? My dear gathering in this Ramadan, turn to Allah and the first thing you should do is that you should have that remorse and that regret if you want to seek Allah's forgiveness. You should hate the things you have done. If you are happy about it, then that is not tawbah. If you have committed adultery and take haram substance, smoke haram or drink haram, or gossip or lie or backbite, if you have made, commit sins and you boast about it and you are happy about it, then that is not tawbah. The first step is you regret. Like Adam alayhi salam, what did he and Hawa say? Qala rabbana zalamna anfusana. They say, oh Allah, we wronged ourselves. We are sorry. We made mistake. Is that you accept your mistake? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, anadamu tawbah. To have that feel regret that I should not have done that. It's tawbah. And then, the second step, my brothers and sisters, is you get yourself out of the pit. Meaning you stop that action. And you look at what is the root. What are the causes? What are the things that are influencing me to commit sins? What are the things that are causing me to look at what is haram? What are the things that are influencing me to drink or smoke what is haram? What are the things that are influencing me in me to eat what is haram? Or to not to treat my family properly? What are those things? What is the root? Because if you are in a pit of filth, no amount of water can clean you. Because you are in the pit. But if you get yourself out of that pit, then a little bit of water can cleanse you. So each and every one of us need to look at where we are. What is influencing me to do that wrong thing? Is it the company that I keep? Is it the environment that I'm in? Is it the programs that I'm looking at? Is it my schedule? What is it? You know better than I. What is causing you to do that? So get yourself out of that pit. And then you can become clean. And after you're out of that pit, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sincerely beg Him to forgive you. And make that determination that you will never go back to those wrong ways and habits. And that is what is sincere tawbah. And when you turn to Allah in that way, that you're determined not to go back, that you get yourself out of the pit, then you should rest assured that Allah says He is al-Ghafoor Rahim, He's forgiven. And follow up your tawbah with good deeds. Inna al-hasanat yudhibna sayyat. Good deeds wipe out bad deeds. So when we come to Allah with our loads of sin and we ask Allah for forgiveness and we make that determination not to go back, let us follow up with good deeds because Allah loves us. Allah wants to forgive us and seeking Allah's forgiveness brings us closer to Allah because seeking Allah's forgiveness is one of the most beloved and noble act of worship. Allah keep reminding us in our Quran, seek my forgiveness. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us make sure 
that this Ramadan that Allah has blessed us with, that we are fortunate to be here today, that millions of people don't have that opportunity. We have that opportunity today. Let us seize that opportunity. Make sure that we use this Ramadan first and foremost to ourselves, to turn a new page in our lives and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely so that when we meet our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will be pleased with us and we will be pleased with our reward. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all, to have mercy upon us and those who are sick to grant them shifa, those who are in difficulties to grant them ease. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبخل يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيم الصلاة